Hi guys, welcome back. It's Nick here. Uh, we're back again with the transport game tutorial series. Uh, and where we'd left off, we'd just hit upon a few snags in our terrain modification script. So let's just take a look at the problem we're having. So if we just find a cleaner area, if I uh, try and raise this area, you find the center point after a while continues increasing. And although we are making a small change, it's not continuing to change. So you see we're almost raising it and then we can never raise it again. Which is a strange error to be having. But I've, I've had a quick look at the script and it looks like we just need to uh, clean up the code a bit. So to start with we had these uh, three lines left over from I think three episodes ago that are basically obsolete now. So this was increasing the center amount twice. Um, so if we just delete them, that will stop the center growing way more rapidly than everywhere else. And the other modification I noticed uh, was we need to resave uh, our local heights variable, that's this one up here, with the new height change. Because uh, otherwise it keeps adding the amount on and it's always the same because this never thinks it's changed. So we're actually going to copy this and we're going to say this is equal to height change yx and this should uh, prevent the problem where the area would only increase in height once and it would never increase again. Uh, the other modification I want to make is we seem to use this diameter over 2 a lot so I'm just going to create a new local variable called radius which is just equal to rate, uh, diameter over 2 And I'm going to copy that into every place we use diameter over 2. Uh, it just saves a few computing cycles uh, rather than recalculating this value, which is never going to change. Uh, we just cache it so we can use it every time. So I just copy these in. Uh, so there we go. Let's uh, give this a test. So I'll go back to Unity and hit play. Um, so let's find a clean area. So now I should be able to increase this indefinitely. You can see immediately this is working. This is great. Um, good, so we have an, an almost square pattern going on, which isn't quite what we're going for yet, but uh, we're about to add the changes so we get a bit of fall off. And uh, the fall off I'm actually going to use here is called inverse square fall off. And it's very common in actually nature, so it, it should work quite well in our terrain system. So, for example, um, gravitational forces um, fall off in this inverse square way. So it means as the uh, distance gets further and further, the fall off gets greater and greater proportion to that. Um, whoops, wrong window. There we go. So back into the code. Uh, with these x2 and y2 variables, we can actually calculate the distance from the center of the circle very easily. Uh, and we can do this by using the absolute value, as these could be both positive and negative, and treat them as though they're coordinates. So all we have to do is some simple Pythagorean theorem work, and then we can get the distance. So I'm going to do float distance. That is spelled appallingly. There we go. Um, and that's going to be equal to math f what uh, square root and then we want to square both items so just to save time I'm just going to do x2 times x2 rather than using the power function and y2 times y2 oops that should not be a comma that should be a uh, plus symbol there we go so this is a basic Pythagorean theorem. Um, if you don't know what that is, I suggest you Google search it. There are a billion other people who could probably teach it better than I have. But uh, this will essentially calculate the distance um, we are from the center of the circle. And once we've got that, we um, all we need to do is multiply it by this amount to scale the amount where we're changing something by. So I'm just going to put graphic. Uh, graphics. I'm going to put brackets around the amount and I'm going to multiply it by 1 over distance 
and it needs to be distance squared because, as we say, it's an inverse square law, which means 1 over the amount squared. Um, and immediately you might be able to spot some efficiency things we can do here. So for example, right here we're square rooting something, and we need to just square it straight away. So to save some uh, efficiency issues later, we can immediately just remove this uh, square uh, square root and remove the square and uh, we've saved a lot of power already. However, when you do something like this, it's important to remember to rename your variables. So I'm just going to go refractor rename and I'm calling this distance squared. So if I'm working later with the distance variable, I don't get confused that this is in fact the actual distance and it's not the distance squared. So this should uh, scale the amount uh, by the distance it is from the center. So we can give this a quick test. And this should give us some good performance straight away. So let's uh, once again find a clean piece of terrain to work on. We seem to have, well, I seem to have destroyed this whole section with uh, the original error we were having. Um, there you go. So you can see it from this height. I'm just going to switch the time back to like 10. Uh, okay, let's go over here. So now as I increase it, you can see the center increases by a lot, but the uh, edges don't. And I think actually this fall off is a bit extreme. Because you see the center is increasing by uh, loads, and the edges are not. So. So why don't we try, instead of using the inverse square rule, we'll just do a standard uh, fall off based on uh, the distance itself. So I'm going to change this to just square root distance. I'll just do it divided by mathf dot square root well, distance squared and see if that gives us a bit of a smoother fall off, a bit more like a circle itself. So it's kind of nice, but we have this sort of strange dip in the center. I think that's mainly because the distance itself is zero, so we're getting a math error there. But this is a, a nicer fall off we're actually using here. So I think I'm going to continue to use that, but just um, modify the the math error. Um, I'm just going to do this as plus one. And that way it will never be zero, because square root of something will never be uh, a negative number. And that should fix our issue. There we go, so we no longer have this gaping hole in the center. Now if you're watching closely, you might notice there are a few other problems. Um, if you look at the console, we see we're getting another error. And this is because if I go to, let me just clear those errors. If I go to the edge of the terrain and click on the very edge, some of the sphere is trying to modify outside of the terrain's bounds, which is a uh, obviously not allowed because there's no terrain there to modify. And later on when we have multiple terrains we'll have to use this to recalculate the height in another terrain area. But uh, for now we can just do a standard check of you know, whether that is a viable place to go. So simple way to check is I'll put the check here. If uh, uh, train pos y plus y2 is less than zero, or if this is uh, instead greater than or greater than or equal to uh, the resolution 
white, then we want to just say don't do this anymore. So we'll just say continue. And we also want to do that for X. So we'll just copy this all up, paste it there, except change these uh, Y's to X's. So X is less than zero, or is greater than equal than resolution X. And this should at least prevent that error from now occurring up. I'd say later on we'll use some more complicated methods to make sure that uh, we in essence get a more infinite world without killing the computer. Um, and I intend to use multiple trains to do that. So now let's just check if we click the edge. Uh, I see we've, we've got more and this is the problem in the set height function. So this is a, um, a different error here. So we fixed the first error, we've got another one, which is essentially that um, when you set the height with the height change, the height change is too large for the area. So all we need to do is calculate the diameter first and then um, modify that later. Uh, but I think I'm going to do that in another time because that will be a lot easier to fix um, when we have our multiple terrain instances going. So for now I'm just going to put in the comments fix me in capital letters um, and that should highlight itself later and I'll say does not work when array is larger than current terrain. There we go. So this allows us to um, make that modification later. Okay, uh, I think that is uh, okay for now. I'm just going to do one more visual change. Um, when you use the terrain editor in Unity, you get this nice blue little highlight area, which I really like. Um, and I want to implement this in game. So if you go into your standard assets folder and click on effects, you go to the projectors folders and then prefabs you have a few prefabs of uh, projector objects and what these do is just project a texture directly down onto the object right below them so if we take a look at the uh, I think the blob shadow projector for now drag that into the scene if uh, we click on that here and zoom in so this is the projector here I'll drag it into open space and as you can see it's creating a sort of dark spot on the terrain. If I move it closer the dark spot gets smaller but darker. So um, we can implement this to create our uh, sort of terrain map. The problem is if I bring this too high in the sky the dots completely disappeared. So I'm just going to change a few settings here and to make it so we can use this. So first of all I'm going to tick orthographic so this stops the dot getting smaller as we get further away and then if we set the far clip plane to like something like a thousand you'll notice that the uh, dot will stay visible if quite faint at the moment even though we're going to um, even though we might be quite a long way from the train you might be asking why the dot is so faded it's because the standard texture isn't particularly dark uh, and we can modify this later to make it uh, a lot darker or different colors but for now I'm just gonna leave it as it is I'm gonna just call this brush size projector and actually that's awfully spelt too projector not projector um, group those all up and we can use this in our script, so I'm just going to copy that name. I'm going to create a new transform called Projector. And in the start, I'm going to say Projector is equal to GameObject.find. I'm going to paste the name in here, dot transform. And this will get it so we can. Uh, get that projector at the start of the script and then take this uh, physics section uh, out of the input section paste it in 
and take this if block and paste it into the physics block. So this essentially does the same thing but slightly less efficiently. Except instead we can uh, take this physics.raycast and we can say projector uh, dot position which is down here it was new vector 3 and what we want to do is set the x and z so we want to leave the y the same so x is equal to hit hit dot point dot x and then y is equal to projector dot position dot y so that stays the same but z is equal to hit Z. So this lines up the dot with where your mouse currently is. So this should make it just a bit nicer to uh, modify the train in a very simple way to start with. So let's just click play and see if that works. You can see uh, that as I move my mouse the uh, projector is moving around and darkening the train that I'm currently over, which is exactly what we want. Uh, Later on we're going to make this a bit more fancy, but for now this is exactly what we need. Um, I think that's almost all we've got time for. Uh, next time we're going to be looking at neating up some of these systems and creating a base tool system. And I think I'm going to remodify this terrain to make it look good again. Um, so until then, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.